4-H Archery Skillathon. This is information from the Oregon State 4-H Archery Manual. This is the manual we are studying for our 4-H Skillathon at our State Archery Jamboree, and hopefully this will be a helpful way for you to study for the competition. Let's go over a little bit about the history of archery. The tradition of archery goes back at least 50,000 years. It was created by kings, queens, soldiers, and adventurers. The invention of the bow and arrow was one of the first attempts at harnessing energy, and many of you have studied potential and kinetic energy as part of science at school. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, the invention of the bow was one of the three most important cultural advances in history, along with the discovery of fire and the development of speech. Archery is fun but can be dangerous. Treat your bow and arrow as a loaded firearm. According to the manual, the Ten Commandments of Archery Safety are as follows. 1. I will always treat my bow and arrows as a firearm and not point them at anything that I knew, do not intend to kill. 2. I will not knock an arrow or draw a bow when a person is in front of me. 3. I will never release an arrow where I cannot see the entire flight of the arrow. 4. I will not shoot an arrow straight up. 5. I will not release a drawn bow without an arrow. I will not dry fire my bow. 6. I will not shoot an arrow that is too short for my draw or one that is damaged or too weak for my bow. 7. I will not shoot toward houses, highways, livestock, or where there are people. 8. I will not go forward to retrieve my arrows until all are done shooting. 9. When looking for an arrow beyond the target, I will set an arrow in the top of the target or set my bow in front of the target to warn others that I am behind the target. And 10. I will always be courteous to others, conserve wildlife, and preserve the natural beauty of my country. Let's talk a little about, bit about the bow and arrow. There are three main types of bows. There's the recurve, the long bow, and the compound. The recurve bow, and here you can see a picture with the different parts of the recurve bow. Be sure to review this as part of your study time. Recurve bows commonly are made of fiberglass or laminated fiberglass and wood. Some have risers made of metal or limbs made from a synthetic material such as graphite. Because of their curved limbs, recurve bows shoot arrows faster than a long bow. They are often used in, in hunting and in target shooting. Archers who compete in Olympic events have to use recurve bows. Here is the long bow. Once again, review the picture. It's from your manual and make sure you know the parts of the long bow. A long bow is a straight piece of wood or fiberglass shaped to form limbs, string notches, and a grip. Fiberglass bows typically are inexpensive, handcrafted wooden longbows used by archers who prefer traditional hunting equipment and are typically, typically are expensive. Many modern longbows are made of laminated wood and fiberglass. Let's talk a little bit about the compound bow. Here is, a, here is the image for the compound bow. We have two divisions, those of you that shoot our Genesis bows, those are considered a compound bow. And then we also have our open division for our 4-H'ers who like to shoot their hunting bows with all the bells and whistles. Compound bows use cables and pulleys to store and release energy. The cable and pulley system creates a let off or a bump about halfway back during the draw. This let off is where the maximum force of the draw is felt. Once past the let off, it becomes much easier to draw and hold back the string. And this feature is what makes compound bows popular with our bow hunters, who often have to wait at full draw while their quarry comes into range or clears an obstacle. Selecting a bow. If you select the right equipment, your experience will be more successful and more enjoyable. The first bit of equipment you select is your bow. And the first thing you want to determine is whether you need a right-handed or a left-handed bow. 
And this is more involved than just deciding if you're right or left handed. And an eye dominance test helps you determine which eye you favor. That's why the first night of our practice, we went through and determined who was right handed and who was left handed based on their eye dominance. And that way you would know which bow to select um, from our bows when you're practicing with us or when you go to buy your own bow. Bows are designed to be drawn a standard distance, which is called the draw length. With long bows and recurves, the farther back you pull the string, the greater the force that you exert. And the amount of force measured in pounds it takes to draw a bow string on a recurve or a long bow is called the draw weight. And we also have draw weights on our bows. For those of you that shoot our Genesis bows, the draw weight is between 10 and 20 pounds. As a beginner, the most important consideration is the draw weight of the bow. It is very important that you are able to draw the bow fully and hold it for several seconds without undue strain. An archer should be able to hold a full draw for a 7 to 10 sec aiming period. A bow that is too heavy will prevent you from developing good shooting form. Start with one that is easy to draw and hold. And bows are usually made from wood, fiberglass, and metal. The weight. According to our Oregon 4-H manual for archery, here are the guidelines they establish as the draw weights for the following ages. For 4th to 5th, 4th through 6th graders, they recommend the weight is 15 to 22 pounds. For 7th to 9th graders, they recommend the weight is 25 to 30 pounds. And for our 10th to 12th graders, the recommended weight they suggest is 35 to 40 pounds. You should always use the weight that you feel the most comfortable at and to where you have the proper um, form when shooting and are able to fully have your, your draw length extended. Let's talk a little bit about arrows. Arrows can be made from the following materials, wood, fiberglass, aluminum, or carbon fibers. The stiffness of the arrow is called the spine. Always use arrows with a proper spine and length for your bow. Arrows come with many different kinds of points, each designed for a different use. Target points, which is the first photo in the column, is, are usually conical or bullet shaped and are designed to cause minimal damage to foam or grass target mats. The, tar the target points are the ones that we use with our Genesis bows. Field points, which is the second photo there in the column, may be bullet shaped or somewhat shaped like the point of a pencil. They are often used for target press practice. Most of our uh, compound shooters are using field points. Broadheads have two or more cutting edges, like the point in the third photo. These are often used for hunting. But sometimes our bow hunters will use other points, such as a judo head and blunts, in certain situations. And the judo head is the fourth picture in the line there. When we think about parts of the arrows, it's important to know which end is which, right? So the knock there is the part that we attach to our string, our knocking point. The fletchings um, can often be multicolored on an arrow. The odd colored fletching or the index fletching is the one that sits outside of the string. You may hear, refer that, uh, hear that referred to as a cock feather. And then the other two fletchings you may hear referred to as hens. The shaft is the long hollow portion of the arrow and the point, and we just covered a different types of points, or is the sharp part that attaches into the target. Selecting your arrows. You may select arrows made of wood, fiberglass, or aluminum. Um, they kind of suggest that you don't buy carbon arrows until you're more skilled as an archer. Uh, it's kind of a cost factor. Let's talk about each of these materials separately. So wooden arrows. Most wooden arrows are inexpensive. However, with the recent popularity of traditional archery, they are better quality and more expensive arrows are available. Wooden arrows may be less durable than arrows made from other materials because they may warp, splinter, or break with repeated heavy use. Fiberglass arrows. These are mainly used for bow fishing. They are not recommended for hunting or target shooting because they are too heavy. Aluminum arrows. 
These are available in a, a range of sizes, prices, and durability. Most are durable with heavy use and can be re-straightened. Replacing the fletching, the points, and the knocks on aluminum arrows is quite easy. Aluminum arrows are the ones that we use with our Genesis bows. Carbon arrows. These are for more experienced archers. They are very strong, durable, and lightweight. However, they are expensive. Um, ask some of your fellow archers in our group who shoot a compound bow about how expensive their arrows are. Uh, many compound bow hunters use carbon arrows. They are also becoming more popular with our dedicated target shooters who use traditional bows. Arrow length. Once you have decided which material you want for your arrows, you must choose the right length. Arrows that are too long do not fly well, and arrows that are too short are dangerous. Arrows need to be an inch longer than the full draw of the archer. Archery shops have a special bow for measuring accurately your proper arrow length. And it is extremely important to have a match set of arrows. Do not mix and match different lengths, different thicknesses of the arrows. So if you're unsure of what arrows to use with your bow, always go to your local outdoor shop and talk to someone who knows a lot about your bow. It's important for them to be able to measure you for the right arrows and have the right weighted arrows for your bow. Fletchings. This is the guidance system for the arrows. It's called the fletching. It's either made of feathers or plastic veins and available in many different sizes and colors. Beginning archers often prefer feathers to veins because feathers are more forgiving. They can fold or flatten as they pass the bow and arrow rest. You might prefer plastic veins if you will be shooting in wet weather or using more durable arrows. However, veins cannot be shot off the shelf. They require an arrow rest that folds out of the way or does not touch the veins as they pass. Our arrows have plastic veins just for durability's sake. And if you notice um, on your Genesis bow or the other bows as well, there is an arrow rest that allows the veins to not be ripped off when you're shooting. Let's talk about some of the accessories and safety equipment that is recommended for our archery program. The beginning archer needs some accessories to have a successful and positive experience. And the most important accessories include an arm guard, a finger tab or a shooting glove, and a quiver. Always wear an arm guard and finger protection when shooting your bow to protect yourself from injury. Wear the arm guard inside your bow arm, which is the one you hold your bow with, between your wrist and your elbow. This keeps clothing out of the path of the string and reduces the chance of, the, of injury should the string hit your arm. So here are two different designs. One is more of a sleeve, one more has the straps that go around your arm. But some of you have realized quickly the importance of wearing an arm guard during our practices. Beginning archers should wear a finger tab on their string hand. This is the hand that pulls and draws the string. The tab protects the middle three fingers which hook onto the string as you pull it back. More experienced archers may switch to a shooting glove or a mechanical release. And you can see here we have a picture of a finger tab. In the middle there is your shooting glove. And any beginning archers can use those as well. And then the other picture is of the mechanical release that a lot of our compound shooters use. The quiver is what holds your arrows. It is a helpful piece of equipment for any archer. Different styles of quivers complement different styles of shooting. Belt quivers attach to the belt on the string side of your body and are popular with target archers. Many of you that have your own bows have your own quiver. And some of you, it would be, you know, it's nice if you would like to buy your own quiver, make it easier for shooting. Ground quivers stick into the ground or often feature a rack that holds your bow when you're not shooting. Uh, bow hunters often use a quiver that mounts directly to their bow. We've been using cones in practice. Cones are not true quivers. As you gain skill, you may want to try some other accessories. A sling can be worn on the wrist or fingers, and it helps you keep a light grip on the bow. Uh, many people will use a wrist sling. There's also a finger sling, and it helps you just kind of keep that steady grip. A clothing shield or a chest guard is worn on your chest. It keeps your shirt or jacket away from a fully drawn string. That's what's indicated in the top photo. A kisser button attaches to the string 
at the point where it touches your lips when you're at full draw. This helps you draw the string to the same point for each shot, and that's shown in the photo in the middle. You can see the little button right there at the corner of their mouth. Stabilizers reduce board bow torque, which is bending or shifting of the bow. If you notice, a lot of our older compound shooters have different sizes and different styles of stabilizers on their bows. So if you have questions about that, make sure we talk about it during practice. And advanced shooters may install a clicker inside the sight window to signal when they have reached full draw, which is the photo at the bottom. This happens a lot with recurve shooters, and it just lets the archer know that they are at full draw and are ready to release. Let's talk a little bit about the range, which is where we shoot when we practice. Um, so the place that you shoot your bow and arrow is called a range. The most important aspect is safety. And if you remember, in the very beginning, we went over our safety rules for the setup of our range. Uh, do not set up targets in front of buildings, sidewalks, or other areas where people might pass. Um, if you're in an area that you don't know about, you may have to find out if your city has an ordinance about shooting within the city limits. And the shooting range should be defined by clear perimeter lines. These lines can be made of tape, lime, or rope, or just know that there are certain sections based on how the floor is laid out. If you are shooting indoors, make sure there are no doors that could allow people to walk into your range. Think about the ends of our range. We keep those large doors closed, and there's only one way that we can, so we can watch the people who come in and out on our range. Post warning signs around the perimeter to help ensure that spectators and non-participants stay out of the area. The parts of the range. The range has a shooting line, a waiting line, and a target line. And we have identified these on our range with chalk lines, which you could use, use tape or lime. The shooting line is the line that the shooter straddles to fire their arrows. With beginning archers, this line needs to be close enough to the target so the archer will be successful and hit the target every time. Shooting line is where we set up our arrows. That's the line you guys shoot from. For our Genesis shooters, our shooting line is at 10 and 15 meters. For our compound recurve shooters, it's at 15 and 20. The waiting line should be three yards behind the shooting line. Shooters are required to stand behind the waiting line until it is safe to retrieve their arrows and until the range commander allows them to advance to the target line. Waiting behind the waiting line gives all shooters an opportunity to concentrate fully on their shot. So we have you guys go put them, make the bow safe, and then you, you know the waiting area behind the shooting line. That is what they're talking about there with the waiting line. When it's time to retrieve the arrows, the range commander has given the signal you may approach the target line. The target line for us in our range is the red chalk line three yards in front of the target. This acts as a speed bump and slows people from walking forward to pull their arrows so they won't run into the arrows sticking out of the targets. It also keeps the people that are waiting to pull their arrows a safe distance from the target. So as you begin to shoot, you'll want to practice shooting into target butts with target faces attached. Uh, make sure your target is attached securely to the butt and they need to be about four feet square. This size allows for more arrows to hit the targets. Targets that are made of foam or natural materials such as straw bales, tightly wound grasses, or excelsior bales. Our targets have um, foam inside them. Uh, they are about three feet tall and about a little over a foot in depth. Um, our target faces slide over, but we do have target faces we can attach to the front of it. And if you've noticed, our compound shooters have been shooting a very thick, high-density foam um, with faces attached to the front of them as well. So if you read through the manual, you'll notice it talks about the nine steps of shooting. And if you think about how we've been practicing, we have gone over these with you. And so the key to becoming an accurate archer is being consistent every time we shoot. How many times have you heard us say, hey, do that same thing one more time. Do that same thing one more time. So if you practice these nine steps, um, you will have work on that until you've mastered your shooting skills. And these are stance, knock, set, pre-draw, draw, anchor, aim, release, and follow through. 
Number one is your stance. When you come to the shooting line, we remind you to put one foot on each side of the shooting line. We tell you to get comfortable with your feet shoulder width apart. Sometimes you've heard us say widen your stance a little bit. Stand straight and tall. Keep your head up, your shoulders relaxed. So I've told you to keep your body straight. And archers shooting from a wheelchair would actually put one set of wheels on each side of the shooting line. And all their stance would be exactly the same. Number two is knock. Place the arrow on the arrow rest, holding the arrow close to the knock. Remember, as you draw your arrow, it goes up and over the top of the bow, always pointing down range. Keep the index feather, the different colored feather of vein, away from the bow. And snap the knock onto the bowstring under the knock locator. Step three is set. Set your bow hand on the grip using only the web and the meaty part of your thumb. Your bow hand should stay relaxed through the whole shot. Set the first groove of your first three fingers around the bowstring creating a hook. That little crease that forms right there at the top of those three fingers. And keep the back of the string hand relaxed. Step four is your pre-draw. You're going to raise your bow arm towards the target without raising your shoulder. Look at the target, line up your bowstring with the center of the bow, and make sure the elbow in your bow arm is out of the way. The elbow of your drawing arm should be near the level of your nose. So you're almost ready to pull straight back and draw. Step five, draw the bow back to full draw. Your elbow should be directly behind the arrow Continue looking at the target, keeping the string lined up with the center of the bow as you draw. Six is your anchor. We've gone over this several times about finding your anchor point. Draw the string to the front of your chin, placing the knuckle of your index finger directly under the side of your jaw. Make sure the string is lined up with the center of your nose. Find your anchor point. I don't know how many times you've heard us say that. Seven is aim. Focus your eye on the center of the target. Keep the string lined up with the center of the bow and continue your gradual draw. So we tell you to aim down your arrow, look at what you're pointing at. You know, try to get it in that red and yellow circle on our target. Eight, when you're ready, you're going to release. Simply release all the tension in your fingers and drawing hand all at once. Continue extending the bow arm towards the target as you release. Continue focusing on the target. And nine is your follow through. The drawing hand continues back beside the neck with fingers relaxed ending up near the shoulder. Or it's like you're brushing your hair back or brushing dirt off your face. The bow arm continues straight out extension towards the target. You're focusing on the target and you maintain your follow through until the arrow has hit the target. So don't wiggle, especially from, from the point when you draw an anchor, don't wiggle, shoot, and follow through. Retrieving our arrows. When the range commander signals, archers may approach the target line. One archer per target may go forward to retrieve their arrows. Walk slowly, watching for arrows that fell short or bounced. Retrieve these arrows as you come to them. Be careful when pulling arrows. Make sure no one is standing behind you. Stand to the side of the target. Place one hand on the target face next to the arrow. Press the target against the butt. So press up against the face of the target. Grab your arrow as close to the target face as possible. Pull the arrow straight out. This manual says to place the arrow in the quiver before you pull it out next. If you don't, you do guys, you guys do what we told you. You don't have a quiver. You're going to pull it out. Lay it on the ground. So the final part of this book is common faults and how to fix them. So we know it can be difficult to determine why arrows are landing where they are. Watching where the arrow lands on the target face can help you identify some shooting form errors. And think about things that we've talked about, about keeping your bow arm straight and not tilting or canting your bow. Uh, making sure you have good grip. Your fingers are up next to the arrow when you release. So archers with good and consistent shooting form should shoot their arrows in a group. And you've heard us talk about this. So grouping is when all the arrows are close together, even if the group is not in the center. 
So some of you have really good grouping. We've just got to get it closer to that bullseye. So in the archery manual, read chapter 6 for some different arrow patterns and common errors that can cause these patterns. So this has been a narration of part of the Oregon 4-H archery manual. So hopefully this will help you guys in preparation for our 4-H archery skillathon.